So my first product that I want to show you guys that I got for my birthday is um, the Faber-Castell 120. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. The, the water, just, it's the watercolor set, just so you guys know. So this is the watercolor set. Um, I already have the Polychromis that if you guys have been following me, I have the Polychromis range. But I also got the watercolor range as well. And I've been dying to have this this product, and I'm so excited to um, to have it in my collection. And I just wanted to show you guys they're very similar. Sim they're the exact same colors as the Polychromis. The only difference is that uh, these are water soluble. The pencils are also different as well. The Polychromis ones are round, while uh, the watercolor ones are more hexagonal. But the exact same colors. And everything, the only difference is that one is water soluble. The case is the same as well. So if you guys have seen my other video on the Polychromis range, the box is exactly the same. Um, it's a beautiful box. It's got the um, wood casing um, and the lock, the lock handles and the carry handle here. So that's basically it. So if you guys are interested in that water, the Faber-Castell 120 water, the watercolor set, if you would like a demonstration or have any questions on it or want a, um, a video solely focused on that product, please comment below if you're interested in that. Um, till then, we're just going to move on to the next product. So sticking to the theme of Faber-Castell, I also got this Faber-Castell 48 pack um, pit pens. Uh, but this is the brush pen set, so just to show you what's in it, they comes with a brochure, um, all Faber Castle products come with a brochure, and it has this uh, magnetic box casing. So it has the 48 colours, 48? Yes, 48 pit pens. Uh, these are the brush pens. The great thing about this is that it has... Um, I don't know how to describe this, that they're, they're, they're stared, they're stared casing, I don't know, it's basically, there's three different levels, and it all pulls out, it's very easy to access as well, they're really great, uh, I haven't tried these out yet, I'm, I'm one, I'm, I might do a video solely to demonstrate this, just a quick demo on on these brush pens, I might do it in a coloring video or something. If you guys are interested in that, comment below if you would like a video solely for the Faber-Castell um, brush pens and having a demonstration on them. Even doing swatches, I can do swatches on these as well. Uh, but yeah, these are great. I got these because one, I want to use this for topography and writing, but I was also interested in using this for coloring in. and. You guys know I love Faber Castell. As you've seen so far, I love collecting their products. And I think they're just amazing, beautiful products. And just the packaging that Faber Castell has for all their range is just really great. And this is something that I have been dying to get my hands on. And I'm so excited that I have it. So that is the Faber Castell 48 Pit Pen. And did you know there's a 90 set in a wooden box set? I only found it the other day, but the only thing is that that wooden box set is really hard to obtain. So I don't know if I'll, I don't know if that's something that I'm after. I'm not really into markers and pens anyway, but I thought that it would be great just to have like a couple of kits just in case. Talking on markers, I got the Copic Sketch. Uh, 36 pack so I got this I know that the Faber-Castell and the Copic markers have similar nibs with the um, there's a pointy nib with the pointy nib but I just wanted to see what Copic markers were all about I've had Copic markers in the past but um, I guess what I want to do is really just have I just wanted to compare the two, but I also wanted to use these as well. I know copy markers are really great for like, I'm interested in using these copy markers for some anime that I want to do in the future. 
I have a, a video series or content idea that I want to film in the in the next like month or so which I'm excited to show you guys that video idea but this is my Copic marker set um I think these are different these are the sketch this is a sketch range so I'm pretty sure there's another range that's square and I think that's the range that everyone uses but this is um this is still pretty cool I don't know much about Copic markers but I thought I might get like a set like this and I'm I think that they're, they're really cool I love packaging anyway guys you know me I like I like rave on about packaging and stuff so this is just great and I'm excited to use this so if you guys have any questions do you want to see a video solely about these Copic sketch markers comment below if you want to see a demonstration of the swatches or maybe I can do a anime manga um, manga art tutorial or manga art piece time lapse for you guys um, just comment below so um, I also got this this is the 20 color set portrait uh, pen pastel kit and I've been watching so many videos on artists using pen pastels it's made me so intrigued in these products and I just want to get my hands on it so I started out I, I, I asked a friend I asked my partner to get me the um, the portrait set which is the 20 set now individual individual pans cost like ten dollars a piece but these are 20 set and this one is really great let me just open it for you guys just to show you I don't have much experience working with pastel so um, it's really one of these mediums that I'm going to try out and experiment I always think it's really healthy as artists is to play with different mediums not just lock yourself into one type of medium and it's just really good to be able to express in whatever what, like many types of mediums and not restrict yourself and restrict your creativity so um, these are the pen pastels uh, they just lock in all together um, but they, and this kit comes with a, a bunch of things like um, sponges and different tools to, applicate, to apply it to the paper but um, I've already filmed an unboxing and unlocking of the colors so in the next clip which is very, which will be after I speak now I'm going to show you an unbox a sped up unboxing of this pen pastel kit with all the colors that are included I also want to show you guys a little sneak peek I don't know if this video will be up before my pen pastel artwork but um, if it isn't and so basically with the pen pastel I created this portrait and this is my first time playing with the pen pastels and I think it's a good attempt um, my only criticism to myself is that I didn't realize there were two two sides to the paper that I could use so I was using the rough side when I, I should have went on the smooth side because the smooth side would have handled these pencils a lot better um, but in terms of the rough side the rough side would like was really good in terms of the skin texture as you see here but this was my first attempt and I'm hoping that we practice I'm just gonna get better and better and just keep like experiment experimenting about this product and learning more about it as I go so that was the pen pastels and I'm gonna show you a sped up version of the pen pastel unboxing right now
we need to talk about my next big thing. So the next big thing I got was a Prismacolor pencil set. And this is the 150 um, Prismacolor set in the box. So the great thing about this, let me just open for you guys, is that this box is tiered. It's, it's, is tiered the right word? It's kind of, um, it's, it's elevated, so which is really great. Um, there, there are six trays and I've used these pencils and I love them. They're very different to the Faber-Castell Polychromos range. And I've read a lot of video, I've watched a lot of videos on Prismacolor versus Polychromos. And I can tell you they're like same, same, but not. Um, they're both great in their, in their, they're both great in their ways. But for me, I just think it's great to have both of them. Um, it really depends on the paper as well that you're working on as, as well. And um, yeah, these seem to be more... They seem to have a more, um, they seem to be more malleable in, in a sense that when you lay a colour down and you work next to it, it's very easy to push the pigment into another colour, as in the, it's, it's more, more oily, I guess, these pencils. Um, these pencils, though, require a lot of, a lot more layering, but so do the, fa so do the paper castles. I don't know, they're like same, same, but not. Um, it depends on your preference. If you're going to, if you're questioning whether to get Prismacolor or Faber-Castell, I would suggest get a couple of pencils from each and experiment with the two. And just aside from that, don't need to get like big cases. But for me, I just love pencils and I love coloring in. And I thought it was, a, it's a good idea to have um, a, few, a couple of things. So, I'm telling you guys, I don't need pencils anymore. Um, this will be the pencils that I'll use for the rest of my life. I don't think I'll ever need new sets. <laughs> but um, I'm very excited to have these and I love them and they smell great and they feel great. But I am going to agree with some other YouTubers that Prismacolor has um, some of the pencils are faulty. I want to show you an example of this. Some of the, um, the the manufacturing of some of these pencils aren't perfect as what you would see with Faber-Castell. Uh, there are some damaged things. I wouldn't say the core of the pencil is damaged, but I would say the pencil itself has some issues such as chipping or um, they're, just imp they're, they're imperfect in, in my mind when I look, when I use these. Some of these colours, like the colours are great, but I'm just talking about the pencil itself. I want to show you guys an example. Pretty sure. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. So, I don't know if this is the... Let me just see if I can zoom in and show you guys. So, this pencil, whoop, let me fix the lighting for you. All right, can you see it? All right, this pencil is a Prismacolor, but if you can see, there is a defect in this pencil. The core isn't damaged, but the external bit seems to be cracked. The wood casing area seems to be cracked and they still, it's like they didn't care and they just put paint on top and they just kept shipping it. Even though the wood, even though the core of the pencil wasn't damaged. So to me, in terms of quality, Faber-Castell, you can trust that the product itself is immaculate. But with Prismacolor, I can say, and I've, I've watched a lot of videos on this, a lot of people are finding their odd pencils that have defaults in them, such as that. You can, clear, you can see it clearly here. I haven't looked at all the pencils in this kit, but this was the one pencil that stood out to me that was screwed up. All right? um, but all these pencils have their own little things like little dints here, little cracks here. Um, you know, not perfect, but 
at the end of the day, the core isn't broken, so I'm fine with that. And at the end, I know if I ever have one of these pencils screw up, I can just buy an individual color if I need to. But other than that, I like it. But yeah, this, this pencil though, the thing about Prismacolors, oh, let me zoom out. Oops. The thing about Prismacolors is that um, these, these pencils are really fragile. Um, I, I haven't dropped these pencils yet. I hope I don't ever, pray to God, um, drop these pencils. But because these pencils are so fragile, I had to get these pencils in person. I couldn't, I didn't, I couldn't trust a courier delivering these to me, even handheld, just because they may not be as, as, you know, careful with these things. Like, you know, you can drop it and, and have it, like, you know, something could just shatter and you wouldn't, you just, I just couldn't do it. So I had to uh, actually find this locally and pick it up by pick it up, like drive there and pick it up and take it home with me and cradle it like a baby. Um, but yeah, I've just heard so many stories that these things, that these prism colors are freaking fragile and I just could not take the risk with buying it online. Um, Faber Castle, you can definitely trust Faber Castle. Uh, being shipped because they're a lot more sturdier and the wax is a lot harder so less less damages will occur um, so there's less stress with that but prism color I just I don't I I'm just very scared with prism color I think a lot of people say a lot of crap about this uh, not sorry not crap but a lot of people talk about prism color being really like fragile and you know easy to break, easy to shatter, um, damages in delivery, and all that type of stuff. Alright, moving on. Moving on. Okay. This is just something small that I bought. This is something I bought. This wasn't a gift. Alright, so uh, I got these stencils. Uh, and I want to use them for colouring in for backgrounds and I still haven't figured out how to use them but I promise you I will and they're basically for backgrounds uh, you can find these in any arts and crafts store I got these at Spotlight which is a Australian craft store and yeah a lot of I've asked a lot of people what they use and a lot of people using things like Tim Holtz um, and any like scrapbooking stencil that you guys can get anywhere but yeah this is one that I got and I'm yet to experiment with this but I promise you I will all right get in there get in there almost finished all right I have been eyeing these products for months months and months and months who did I see use this first I saw Kay Werner designs she was using this with her crafting and her calligraphy and she was using these fine techs and I have been oh, this is that fine tech is really hard to get um, I had to get this from a special place in Victoria and get it shipped to me and I couldn't find it on eBay I couldn't find it online I had to I had to actually research an art store uh, in Australia that had this or not even Australia like any art store that supplied this and could get it sent to me and lucky enough there was an art store in Victoria that stocks fine tech and I was like that's amazing I'm buying it blah blah bought it um, a lot of people use this for calligraphy but I'm hoping to use this in my watercolor artworks and I'm I'm gonna use it for topography as well if I do calligraphy again um, but yeah, these are really hard to get. It's hard to get online. Uh, well, it just looks so pretty. That's one of the main reasons why I bought it. I thought it looked so pretty. And, um, I also because there's just different colors of gold. I love gold. And I just wanted to use this with my watercolor as well. You know, Fine Tech, um, Fine Tech isn't really big, like, I've looked on their website and Instagram. There's not a lot of marketing going on or a lot of um, promotion for this. Uh, but I, I reckon 
I reckon this brand will go big in the next next year or so. But I'm hoping to do a demonstration on this and I'm hoping to do a review. Moving on. Alright. Okay, the last piece. The last piece I'm gonna show you guys. Alright. Oh wait, not the last piece. Just a few little things here and there. I just want to show you guys this. Uh, my friends are so lovely. Uh, they got this uh, pencil holder with Shine Bright Design engraved on it and my name. And basically, I use this when I colour. And so, because I have such a big pencil set, I thought, instead of having the pencil set so close to me, I could just take this little pencil tray and just collect the colours that I need and come back to my desk and colour. So I thought that was really great and um, I think it's really beautiful, it's really sentimental and it's really thoughtful. I think it's really sweet and I thought that was great. Um, so that's one of the things that I got. And then I want to also show you guys this, this little thing I got. This is a pencil brush uh, holder. It's not like a spinning thing, but I got a holder because I was tired of throwing my brushes in a, in a cup. And I thought, one of, my, one of my worst things is that I I really don't look after my paint brushes, which I should. I just leave them in the water and I forget to take them out and they don't dry. And I feel like if I had this, I'll just remember to take it out of the water and put it in the thingy, put it in this <laughs> to let it dry. Um, but that's that's one of the things that I am trying to do. I take better care of my brushes. But yeah, there is, I think it's really cute. The only thing about this uh, kit is that it doesn't fit my my big art spectrum handle. Won't fit. So that's a shame. But all my little ones, all my round brushes and skinny brushes and square brushes or whatever will fit in here. And I think it's very cute. Alright, let us finish. So, finishing, I got the Mission Gold palette. Yay! I know I have the Mission Pure Pigment set, but I just love this palette. And you guys know me because I rave on it about packaging and whatnot, and I'm just like, oh, packaging so sexy. So this palette is so sexy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really weird way to explain it, but um, this palette, the rose gold, the plastic, the way that it's shaped, I can tell you on a packaging point of view and a design point of view, this packaging for Mag Magello is really good. Oops. So, here we go. You guys know me. I appreciate Magello's thought to its packaging and its design and its uh, product development and I like this product, I like Magello. I, I can trust that the quality of these paints will be good. The only difference between this palette and the Pure Pigment set, I wonder if I should pull it out for you guys. Give me a second. The Studio, the studio Bulletproof palette is humongous compared to this. Don't ask me why I bought this Mission Gold palette. I just thought it was cool and I just really love Mich I love Magello. Um, to tell you the difference, this one, the pigments are mixed together while the pure pigment set, the pigments are separated and laid next to each other. So for example, you may get two or three pigments mixed together to equal this one pan. And um, that's all right. I don't mind that. Uh, the only reason I got this is because what if I want a vibrant, pal vibrant palette that I can take with me on the go? Because my Winston Newton one is bigger than this and there are more colors. And I feel like I need to limit myself when I'm on the go. Well, this is still a bit bigger than my 12 pan uh, Winston Winso Newton one as well, which is a pocket set, which is this tiny. But, um, I don't know. I just got this because I like the packaging. <laughs> I'm crazy, I know. <laughs> but um, I like the packaging, I like the colours, I like the vibrancy, and I love the, um, the, the formula of these paints. 
they just come out really nice. They're not too, they're not too chalky. They're not, actually, these paints are not chalky at all. Um, they're not chalky, they're not opaque. Um, yeah, I really like them. And I like the, I like their approach to their products and their way of thinking and just their, their attention to detail, you know. And it's rose gold. Rose gold is so in right now. So. <laughs> That's another stupid reason why I want this. Because it's rose gold. <laughs> but um, I'm excited to show you guys with this. So uh, someone asked me recently about my Pure Pigment set versus this set. And this, they're, all, they're almost exactly similar. They're both artist quality. This has 24 colors. This has 50 something. I think, what is that? I don't know. I can't remember how many pig, how many colors this has, but I'm pretty sure it's like fifty two or fifty something colors once you mix all the pigments together. Um, but this this set has the pigments mixed together in the pans and then put in, and then this one is. Sorry, my palette is dirty, but it's still colorful. Um, but this palette is. The pure pigments, but they're laid next to each other. Uh, but yeah, this, this palette is humongous as well. It's a palette that stays in my art room and I don't take it anywhere. Um, but it's so colourful. That's what, I don't know, I like the double arches. Which is why I like this, this set, because the double arches. And the palette itself is very cool. This set I got because I just wanted to try it out. Um... I love Magello. I know I'm going to use it anyway. Um, it's not one of those products that I'm kind of hesitant with. It's this product that I know will do good. Um, and some of these colors repeat as well in the Pure Pigment set because they're already mixed. Um, but yeah. The good thing about the Pure Pigment set is that I was talking about a, a YouTube, uh, one of my YouTube followers who asked me a question about this set. The good thing about this set, I'm going to reiterate again, is that because it is a pure pigment set and the way that the, pa the the paint is laid out next to each other, it's like red, brown, black. If you want it more brown, you go towards the brown section. If you want it more black, you go towards the black section. So it gives you that power of customizing your paint color. Um, and just your colors will never be the same, but it gives you that power to make it darker or lighter or more of one pigment than the other. Right? But this one is the pigments already mixed together, so there's no there's no ability to control your pigment your the amount of whatever pigment is in the paint. Um, but yeah, the the thing that I don't like about Magello palettes, I don't. It's not ah, oh, I don't like it. It's like um, it's pet peeve, but I can live with it. And you would have just seen how the paint dries here. See how it pulls together? Um, the reason it pulls together is because the material that the palette is made of, it's made of like a, um, a I, think it, I think it's plastic or resin or whatever. But um, it's made of a material that makes it so glossy or so, so smooth that the paint's just pull together and that's how they sit like you can see with the dark purple here it just pulls together and it sits there um, as with like my Winslow Newton palette when you mix it on the palette you can see what the color is while well, with this with these palettes Magellos when you mix it you can't see what the color is but the paint's just gonna pull back together like it's just gonna go poop in a ball um, which is, some people don't like that. I don't mind it. I can live with it. So, yeah. Um, so, that is my art supply haul. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I was dabbling and talking here and there. And I wasn't taking it. I was having a bit of fun. But if you guys have any questions on... The products that you have seen today, for example, this Mission Gold uh, palette, if you want to see a demonstration and a swatch 
and I guess my review or my thoughts on this product just comment below any products that you have seen for example the Prismacolors the Fine Techs or whatever just comment below ask me questions I love it when you guys talk to me it makes my day I love engaging with you guys um, keep talking to me tell me how your day's gone ask me how my day's gone you know whatever and yeah, I'll make sure to list every product that I have shown you guys today in the description below. And if you have enjoyed that, give me a like because I like it when you like it. <laughs> and if you like my videos and you like me, please subscribe because I love having new subscribers and I love having a reason to create content and show you guys artwork show you guys art supplies and whatnot if you have any ideas or any requests on videos that you want to see just comment below tell me um, and yeah also follow me on Instagram Facebook and Twitter but I will respond to you most likely on Instagram if you comment um, I'm more of an Instagram girl or you can just comment below because I engage below as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao!